Hello friends, this video introduction to 3D Geometry Part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Welcome to 3D. In this video, we will study three dimensional space, coordinates of a point in a space, distance between two points in 3D space. And also sectional formula in 3D space. So we'll study three dimensional space, coordinates of a point in, in 3D space, distance between two points in 3D space and sectional formula in 3D space. Before we study or before we go into 3D space, let's understand why do we need to study three dimension. Let's assume we have this room and we have a ball. This ball moves in the room. It bounces back, came back. We threw the ball, it, it bounced back from the wall and came back. Now if you see this ball went through various directions in the room. First it went straight, it took a left, again it bounced back and came. So in this case there are three vectors. This ball can move in x direction, y direction, also in z direction. If you see, you see the ball moved in this direction, then this direction and then this direction. So there are three directions involved. The movement of ball in the room is three dimensional. So this is one good example of application of three dimensional in the real world. Also if you see this aeroplane, it comes, it flew. Here also if you see there is a x coordinate, there is a y coordinate and there is a z coordinate. So here also three dimensional involved. So these are the two examples just to show why do we need three dimensional. In most of the real life scenario we do need three dimension. Now let's start with the coordinates plane in three dimensional. In three dimensional there are three planes actually. So if you see this plane is one plane, I'll say plane one, blue plane, plane two is second plane and plane uh, red is third plane. There are three planes. With three planes you get three dimensional space. Also these three coordinate planes divide the space into eight part and it is called octant. If you see this part is called part one, correct? This part is called part two. Again this part somewhere we have part three and this part is part four. I'll write here to make things clear. One, two, three, one, sorry this is one, this is two, this is three and four. So there are four, four uh, parts here, similarly four part below. You can say 5, this is 6, this is uh, somewhere here not hidden, not hidden, that is 7 and this is 8. There are 8 parts and they are all equal parts. So they are called octants. So 3 dimensional space consists of 3 coordinate planes and all these coordinate planes divide this into 8 different parts. And this is what we call 3 dimensional space. In 2 dimensions you have only one coordinate, uh, one, one space. And here we have three different planes. If you see here, there are various values. For example, here you see if you take this as x axis, this is y and this is z, this is the positive x axis. I can say 1, 2, 3, 4. Here it is negative, negative x. I can say minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Similarly, for y, this is positive, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, this is negative. Similarly for z we have some positive values and for some negative values. Thus you can see in one coordinate, for example you are talking about coordinate 1, all x, y and z, x, y and all are positive. But it, when you talk about coordinate 2, here you see z is negative, y is positive. Similarly this coordinate you see z is negative, y is negative, y is positive, only x, uh, x is negative, only y is positive here. Similarly in this quadrant you see this quadrant, everything is negative, x is negative, sorry, not this, the other one, the one, the seventh number, you see everything is negative, x is negative, y is negative, z is negative. So there are different quadrants in, e, in each of the quadrants, sometimes all x, y, z are positive, sometimes all are negative, Sometimes one of them is positive. So we have a table for this. 
in quadrant one, the eight quadrant we have discussed now, which three planes divide. So in quadrant one, all are positive. In quadrant two, x is negative, y and z is positive. In quadrant three, x and y is negative, z is positive. Similarly, we have various values of various signs of x, y and z in all the coordinates. When we are talking about coordinates of a point in a space, we take all x, y, z vector. For example, there is a value here, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. This is 3 and let's suppose this is 4. 3 and 4 combine meets here. So this point is nothing but x is 3, y is 4 and y is z is 0. 3, 4, 0. But now when you want to take the z component also here, you can take such point here. And let's suppose this is 5. So this becomes 3, 4, 5. So this is the point in a space, in a three-dimensional space, where you have x vector as 3, this is 3, y as 4, this is 4, and z as 5. Similarly, here also same thing in a different graph. This is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is z-axis. So if you are looking for a point P, X, Y, Z, you take this X along X axis, you take this Y along Y axis, and then you take Z along X axis. So what you get is P, X, Y, Z. Let me repeat once again, this is X, Y, Z coordinate. If you want to plot P, X, Y, Z, point X, Y, Z, you first take X along X axis, then Y along Y axis, and then Z along Z axis. Whatever you get is the point X, Y, Z. We'll take some example. First is we have to find the octant in which minus 3, 1 and 2 lie. So for this, let's refer to the graph we had. So here we have to find minus 3, 1 and 2. So if you see minus, this is minus, this is positive, this is positive. So this, if you see here, the first is negative, x is negative, y is positive and z is positive. So you see third quadrant, second quadrant is the one which satisfies this condition. x is negative, y is positive. Similarly for minus 3, 1 and minus, minus 3, 1 and minus 2, this is x, y, z. You see x is negative, y is positive and z is negative. So if you see this, 6 quadrant satisfies this. So we can say that this is in the 6th quadrant. Thus we can say that this value is in 2nd quadrant and this value is in the 6th quadrant. We just refer the table and found the value. Let's take one more example. A point is on the x-axis. What are the coordinates of y and z? So if the, if the point is on the x-axis, the y-coordinate will be 0 and the x-coordinate will be 0. Very simple. I'll draw one second if you want. This is x, this is y, this is opposite z. If the point is on x-axis, for example, this is the point. So here if you see, the x is equal to 4, let's suppose, or some x. y current is 0 in this, and z is 0. So any point in the x axis can be denoted by x, 0, 0. So you can see that y is 0 and x is, z is also 0 in this case. Because since this is an x axis, the z component is 0. Since this is an x axis, the y component is also 0. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos. Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.